You are listening to the Your Empty Nest Coach Podcast with Coach Christine, episode number 19. Let's talk about extracurriculars. This podcast is for you, a mother who years ago walked away from a career to raise your child. Sure, you've been busy volunteering, carpools, maybe part-time work, and taking care of everyone. But your main gig? That has been your child. Now that they are in their later years of high school, the empty nest looms ahead for you and it is freaking you out out. I've been there and I get it. Together, we'll turn our freaking out energy into freaking awesome energy. Hello, my empty nest friend. Thanks for listening today. How is your month going? I hope it is fantastic. Really, today's episode is all about those extracurricular activities that our children feel pressured to be a part of in their high school years. Sure, some of our kids are all in and it's hard to keep up with them. But what about parents who have kids that have no motivation to participate in school activities? What does this all mean? Now, you know me, I'll tell you it can mean whatever you want it to mean. But I'm bringing in someone with a lot of Reddit karma to share her thoughts on the topic. I found a post on Instagram about extracurriculars and took a read. It was written by my guest, Admissions Mom, and to be honest, I felt connected to her and was continually saying yes, yes, yes as I read her post. The best news is that when I asked her to join me for an episode to talk about this topic, she said yes. My future empty nest friends, if you have a child heading off to college soon, you really should get to know Admissions Mom, and this episode is for you. If you don't have a child heading off to school soon, still take a listen because Admissions Mom is all about your child learning who they are. And that is likely why I feel a connection to her. To share a little more about Admissions Mom, a.k.a. Carolyn Allison Kaplan, she started on a simple subreddit, Applying to College, that has taken on a life of its own. Carolyn went through the college process with her three amazing but very different kids and lived to tell the tale. That subreddit has matured with over 70,000 subscribers, and now she has both an app and a book in the works. Admissions Mom helps students and parents through the stressful college admissions process with tips on choosing the right school for your child, learning to leave the pressure behind, and practicing mindfulness. She's my kind of lady. Carolyn, aka Admissions Mom, thrilled to have you here. Welcome to the Your Empty Nest Coach podcast. Thank you so much. And thank you so much for having me here. I'm excited to be able to learn from you and, and maybe share a few ideas. I think we're all going to learn from you. I, I, I was like, she's got 70,000 subscribers on Reddit people. <laughs> Is that 90, right? 90,000 90, now. Almost. Like eight, nine like, something. I can't believe you're talking to me. <laughs> How do you have time? <laughs> but they're not my subscribers, by the way. It's, it's applying to college. It's not, you know, I'm just a moderator. So. Did you start it? No, I didn't. I came on when we had about 8,000. Wow, wow, that's still, okay, well, good clarification, but excellent nonetheless, my goodness. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so I mean, and we have a lot of helpful adults. I'm not the only one there by any means. But it's, that is wonderful. So Carolyn, while I know you are able to speak to many aspects of the college admission process, today let's talk about those extracurricular activities that our kiddos feel extreme pressure to add in their high school years. So I have some questions for you that might be on my audience's mind as they prepare for their child heading off to college in the years to come. Y'all ready? Yeah. All right. So question number one, how important are extracurriculars really in the college admission process? So I think extracurriculars are important in life. Um, I pretty much take everything out of the college admissions process because living a good life, living a full human being life makes you a good college admissions prospect. So yes, they're important because it's important to be involved in life. Um, and that's where I kind of come in. And, and I think that you get involved in your life personally, your personal life. So you read, read, read. Get a job, take care of yourself, exercise, practice mindfulness, meditation, yoga, learn things that help your brain development, like an instrument or a language, take up a project. I mean, all of those things, get involved in your own life, get involved in your family by doing the dishes, by making dinner, by helping out with siblings and grandparents, and then get involved in your school. And it can be by starting a club, joining a club. Sure, that's great if that's your thing and that's what you want to do, go for it. But it can also be something independent, like simply 
sitting next to somebody who you see sitting alone in the cafeteria um, and making a point to say hello to them. You know, there's all sorts of ways to be involved and, and get involved in your community. Find where you have gifts that you can share and find where you can help. And if you don't feel like you have any gifts, simply go pet kittens at an animal shelter or walk a dog. I mean, there's all sorts of ways. And if you're not old enough to do that, make goodie bags to pass out to homeless people. There are so many ways to be involved, but if, if you're involved, then you're doing extracurriculars. And so that's where I feel like it's important. And I feel like that's important as a human being in the world. Love it. So good. Just being involved in your own life. That's wonderful. <laughs> This is, this is what I got from reading your book and I loved it. It's, it's great. I can go into a lot more specifics if you want. I mean, I have tons of specifics so maybe that we'll I give. Just, let's, yeah, you know what? Maybe we'll wrap up there because I think you've already given me ideas and I'm like, man, pet and kittens, yes. Yeah. <laughs> so do you think there's such a thing as too many extracurriculars? I think that there's too many extracurriculars if you're feeling stressed out about it. If you're doing the extracurriculars simply because you think they need to be done to be in college or because you just have so many interests that you're overwhelming yourself. And sometimes, and I'm very guilty of this, of doing too many things. And sometimes I have to sit back and prioritize. And, and I know for some of us who have a lot of energy, that can be the case. So then it's more about just taking care of yourself and finding the balance. And if you're doing it just for college admissions, then yes, you, there, you can definitely be guilty of doing too many extracurriculars. You certainly don't have to be involved in everything, but I do want the kids who I talk to to be involved with something in their own lives, physically, mentally, and emotionally, to be involved with their families in some way, to be involved with their school in some way, and to be involved in their community in some way. I think that's just what makes a good, well-rounded, and not well-rounded in the bad way, like college admissions, just a good, well-rounded person, a human being on this earth. Wonderful. Wonderful. Oh my gosh. I can think of like three more episodes I want you on. <laughs> so good. I love that. The physical, mental, and emotional thinking about that with I think sometimes, especially as parents, we just get caught up on the check boxes that we need exactly. for college admission. And there's so much pressure and well, yeah, you're in choir, but maybe you're not the president and do you have to be the president of everything? And just whether or not that's right for your kid is really exactly. important. <laughs> and that's why I talk a lot about taking leadership of your life. Um, and I think parents and kids get really caught up in leadership. And leadership is, you know, more about, to me, leadership means making the world a better place around you, right around you. So it doesn't even mean it has to be on a global scale. If you make your family a better place, then you're taking leadership in your family. If you make yourself a better person, you're taking leadership in your life. And we're all responsible for making ourselves a better person. And when we make ourselves a better person, we're taking leadership of the world because then we're contributing to a better world. And so leadership doesn't have to have a title. It can be just being a leader in your own life, in your own family, and your own community. Yes. Yes. I like to say, be the CEO of your life. Exactly. That, that like no one else is going to do it for you. And you may not get to be the CEO of a corporation, but you have your own life to do it. I know, know right? Like, <laughs> like our own life is enough. <laughs> Let's get that one down <laughs> yeah. before we run everyone else's. <laughs> And our kids as moms. Okay, this is for moms. Let's be the CEO of our own life so we can exactly. do the best for our kids and help them to be the leader of their own life. That's wonderful. That's the best kind of parent when you show them that you are the CEO of your own life. When you show them that you're taking care of yourself emotionally, physically, and mentally, then they learn by example rather than you're having to run their lives. So true. It's wonderful. So I'm thinking you don't think there's like a magic number of extracurriculars that should be on an ap application or do you so i i have this philosophy so there's this big push right now to have a spike in extracurriculars that i have a problem with because then kids feel like starting at 14 years old that they have to figure out what they want to be so they can figure out what they want to major in so they can figure out what they need to be doing extracurricularly starting at 14 years old. I find that to be very, very sad and I have a lot of issues with it. I agree with you. Um, if that kid is, that's natural for them, then great. I'm all for it. Mm -hmm. But so many kids are fabricating that now and they're kind of like curating their lives to have this application. 
Um, and then there's other kids who feel the pressure to be so super well-rounded. I, I kind of, I call it, I take a, a kind of a combination and I call it star-shaped. So find the four or five things in your life that are really important to you, that mean a lot to you, and, and make yourself into a star. So be star-shaped. That's kind of my um, compromise between the spike and the well-rounded. You know what? If you're spiky, good. Go for it. Be totally spiky. That's, there's nothing wrong with that. And if you're well-rounded and you want to be captain every club and president every club, then go for it. That's you too. But if you're not, if you're trying to just like find a way to find your life and find out, figure out who you are, then do that and think about being a star. You know, four or five little spikes that kind of like help you move forward. I love that. I've never heard that before. I love it. I made it up. <laughs> not just now. Well, but. <laughs> it's fantastic. <laughs> it's really good. As I feel like it's interesting. I homeschooled my daughter and it wasn't mm -hmm. something that was like, I went in going, I'm going to homeschool. It was like thrown into it. Like, this is your only option yeah. kind of thing. And I did find that a lot of things were outside of normal and the box and the things that other people wouldn't consider activities we did. And um, I really can, as you were talking, I could picture like the points in her life yeah. coming out. It's really, really good one. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, I'm glad you like it. All right. So this next question, I think I know what you're going to say. Well, I don't know what you're going to say. This has been good. So my next question is for the mothers who have the introverted child who needs to come home, recharge their batteries from all the social time they've had in school during the day. Maybe after their school days, they had right to a video game or they knit or they read something that could be viewed as very solitary. So although many, I know so, some parents will be like, yeah, but my kids are social online. I know, I know. <laughs> anyway, here's the question. If that's my kid, should I be concerned about their lack of participation in school activities and clubs? That, that question comes up a lot on Reddit, too. Uh, let me just say, first of all, something about video games. Um, if your kid is a solid video game player and it's something that they've really kind of perfected and gotten really strong at, colleges are looking to create video game teams. And a lot of money is being made out there in video game world with League of Legends and I don't know, I don't know the names of all of them, so I'm not even going to try. So that is a path for sure, and that can be a spike. I have always told kids, and I encourage my private students to write down video game playing as an extracurricular. Having said that, I have a, I had one of my children was in a hours a long video game player and it was concerning to me it wasn't concerning to me as far as college applications go because you know I kind of knew that we would be able to figure that out otherwise um, and I always feel like the kid should apply to college as the person he is so or she is so that wasn't my concern my concern was that my child was spending too much time playing video games period as a person, a human in the world and so that's kind of that was actually when I started coming up with this getting involved thing. Gotcha. So it's great, play video games, but make sure you're doing these other things also. Make sure you're involved in your life, you know, emotionally, physically, mentally. Make sure you're involved in your family, not just sitting and playing video games, but, you know, offer to do the dishes, make that, or whatever it is that you want to do that shows your involvement. Make sure you're involved in your school in some way, you know, however it is that you want to figure that out, even if it's an independent project, and make sure you're involved in your community. As long as you're doing those things, then play video games all you want outside of those things. Now, Having said that, there's, you know, as long as it's something that's interesting to you, um, the, an, an admissions officer from the University of Chicago, who I was talking to a few years ago, told me, like, don't try to figure out what we want on your application, because as soon as you think you've figured it out, we're going to change our minds, and it's going to be something completely different. So five years ago or seven years ago, probably playing our video games was something that they would have looked down upon. Now it's not. Now they think, oh, cool, because we've got to fill our team, you know, and so kids are getting recruited for it. So, you know, you have to kind of just go with who you are. And if it's something that interests you and keeps you going and makes you want to wake up in the morning, go for it. As long as you're involved in your life in other ways. Love also. it. Wonderful. Great advice. I didn't know about the video games, <laughs> the, like the teams. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, there are colleges out there making teams and there are kids out there making a lot of money playing on teams, professional teams. Wow, okay. So my son, so my son the one who is a video game player, ended up um, getting a Turner Broadcasting internship simply because of all that time he had spent playing video games in high school and in college a little bit, not as much, um, because they were looking to expand their um, video game channels 
And so when he was applying for internships, they were, you know, they told him that he was like, oh, cool. I can like tell you all about it. Like I know everything yeah. I've played for hours <laughs> and hours and, you know, and so that was like, he was so excited to call and tell me about that because he was like, mom, remember when you kept telling me to get off the stupid computer all the time? <laughs> it always comes back to us. <laughs> I mean, yeah. That's fantastic. Oh my gosh. Okay. So back to, those are all my big questions I have for you. So what are some, now I have some that are just popping into my head. What do you have a most unique uh, activity that you remember somebody using in the college admission process? I hate the word okay. unique. So what word would you I'm use? Banning <laughs> I'm banning it from college <laughs> admissions. Um, and no, I, I honestly don't. I don't think there are unique activities anymore. I think that they're, the kids, this Gen Z kids, are so talented and so creative and so interested in life and in the world around them that I see kids doing all kinds of amazing things. But, you know, I mean, like kids who organize March for Our Lives, I mean, I think that's incredible. But it's not unique. There's a, a bunch of them, you know. Internships are a dime, dime a dozen now. I mean, every, but you know, um, I'm trying to think of the things that really stand out to me. No, honestly, I can't because there, there's so many kids doing so many amazing things that for me, what I like to see are the kids who are doing what they want to do. Now, the one thing that I don't see often that I encourage a lot is getting a job. And I mean, like a real teenage summer job, um, making smoothies, flipping burgers, chasing kids around a pool. Um, William Fitzsimmons, the Dean of Admissions at Harvard, talked about that a few years ago, and he has it on his website where he's like, you know what, I just want to see teenagers like doing old fashioned teenage stuff and stop the arms race of like the, right. the super teenager. And that's something that I don't see often are kids who just have a job. But that shows so many different aspects to admissions officers in addition to making yourself into a better person. But, you know, it shows resiliency. It shows leadership. It shows responsibility. It shows your willingness to get out of your comfort zone a little bit and be around people you might not ever be around again in your life. Um, and I, and what I found is that the kids, even if they don't need the money, the kids who put themselves out there for those jobs do have interesting outcomes when it comes to writing their essays, because they have a whole different yeah. world to write about in their essays that they might not have ever had. And there's a difference between going to work where you have a boss who is paying you hourly versus going to an internship where you're not getting paid. And there's a big difference in the expectations of what they expect you to be doing and your expectation of what you know you have to be doing when you're getting paid by somebody. So I think it's a good experience for kids. And that is something I had, all three of my kids had jobs every summer and often during the school year that's too. That's really good advice. Get a job. <laughs> yeah, that's my first thing. Whenever kids come to me and say, what do I need to do for extracurriculars? I'm always like, get a job. And then find an independent project. And then I go into my whole get involved with your love life. it. Love <laughs> it. It's great. <laughs> um, so, so is there anything else you'd like to share about that topic in particular? Here's the thing that I say to pretty much every kid that comes in, because I often have kids on Reddit who haven't had a lot of privilege. Most of, a lot of our kids on Reddit are coming from schools where they don't have great college counseling because they're just overwhelmed with too many students and they're first generation kids and low income kids whose parents haven't had the experiences to be able to help them. So they'll come in and they'll say, I don't have any extracurriculars because I have to work or I don't have any extracurriculars because I have to take care of grandma every day after school. And so what I have to tell them is those are yes. your extracurriculars. Yes. So, and what I say is, you know, keep in mind, anything you do outside of your classwork, your test prep and your homework is considered an extracurricular. If you're spending your time, so think about that too, as you're spending your life, do you want it to be playing video games eight right. hours a day? If that's what it is, that's what it is. Do you want it to be that you're surfing YouTube videos and just watching the Kardashians all day long? Because you know what? Maybe that's something you want to go into. Maybe you want to go into fashion or not. But whatever it is you're spending your time on, those are your for extra pillars. And that's jobs. That's your family and home responsibilities. That's elderly or child care. That's your personal projects. That's your interests, your hobbies, working out at the gym, whatever it is, independent research. In, in addition to all the more typical things that we think of for high school kids, like in and out of school, community service, clubs sports. So those things that you're doing 
That's what your extracurriculars are. And I think a lot of people don't understand that. A lot of people don't get that, like, oh, I have to take care of grandma every day. I can't, or my school doesn't have right. clubs. Yeah. You know, and then, like, you don't have to be in a club to have an extracurricular. It's just being involved in some way. And then you just write down what you do. Yes. And you're so much more involved in I, life that way. It's funny because, right. you, you know, you think, you know, there are parents who think, well, my kid has straight A's. My kid's the president of the student body. My kid has done the vice president of this. And yeah, but there, you're not the only one. Like you said before, <laughs> like you're, that is, your yeah. child is not the only one like that that meet all those qualifications. And you know, it might be why they didn't get into Harvard because they're not the only one. <laughs> Right. Yeah. I mean, if you think about it, there's 30,000 high schools in the United States. So there's 30,000 valedictorians, there's 30,000 class presidents, you know, and then if you add on the vice president and the salutorian and, you know, I mean, that's a lot of kids. So, and there's only, you know, so many spaces, I think there's like 10,000 spaces and, and, you know, and so we have so many kids kind of trying to get into that one little place. And that's where I think it's more important to be focused on your life than about, getting into any certain college. In fact, I came up with yesterday, this is like one of my new slogans. I'll be the first one to, Ooh. you'll be the first one to hear it. But it's focusing on getting in. I tr I'm now going to start calling it getting inward, like figuring out who you are, because that's more it important than, than getting in. And, and getting inward doesn't mean like sitting and, you know, staring at your belly button all the time. I mean, it means like also figuring out what you want to do, like to be involved. I think that's important for kids to understand. And I, and I know a lot of kids have to have jobs. And I think that they have to understand that that is their extracurricular. And, um, yeah. I love see, that was inward. Yeah. And let me tell I, I don't remember. I think it was when I was talking one of my episodes about the major and I've just seen so many people go through life and, and they, it's like, you do the next thing, you do the next thing. And you know, you're a lawyer and then like, or you're an accountant or you're an author, whatever it is your career is. And then your career ends for some reason, you know, maybe you're sick, maybe um, you get fired. Maybe you just don't like it. And if you don't know who you are inward, that inward stuff, and you don't know who you are, like you have an identity crisis because you think you're your job and you're not. And like, exactly. if, if our kids, and that's, I yeah. feel so strongly about this. I love that you're doing this, that if our kids can figure out who they are before they even go to college or tech school or wherever they go, they are so ahead in life. And I want every, exactly. everyone should know this. <laughs> yes. I feel like, um, I mean, this is why I started doing college counseling and college consulting, because I felt like it was an opportunity to help kids figure this out. And there are so many kids who are literally suicidal over the stress of the whole process and about getting in that, you know, I'm trying to kind of, I, what, what I want them to understand is that it doesn't matter whether they get into a certain school or not, you know, and so extracurriculars are not about getting into college. Extracurriculars are about developing into the person you are and, and helping yourself find that. And I think for, it's just become this like super random weird checkbox that I hate you know, of like things to do. And it's really not. If you want to make a checkbox, think about it with your life. So Carolyn, maybe my child isn't involved with their community much. Do you have some suggestions on how they would go about doing that or some ideas? Yeah, I do. I think it's important to be involved in your community, not necessarily for college purposes. I mean, for example, my own child was super involved in his community, but refused to put it on his college admissions applications because he felt like that was kind of, I'll use his word, gross. <laughs> but however, <laughs> I feel like it's important to be involved with your community. And I don't think it's gross to put it on your application because it is what you're doing if you're doing something. And so here are a few suggestions that pretty much any kid can do. Go to a food bank and make sandwiches. That's a simple thing. And they're always looking for helpers. Go to a retirement home. This is where I think you can really make a big impact. If you're a musician, go to a retirement home and play your music on Sunday afternoons, no matter what instrument it is, even if it's your voice. But if you're not a musician, there's all sorts of other things you can do. You can play games with them. Awesome. Great. The activity that my kids did that I felt like was really meaningful, and this did not come from me, it was from one of their teachers, but they would go and they would write down life stories and they would meet with the people and they would write down the life stories. Then they would go home and put those stories into song form and then go back and wow. present the songs and sing. The song. 
but you can do it in all sorts of ways. You can take that home and you can write it on a piece of paper and pretty writing and do art around it and frame it and give it to the family. Or you can just simply type it up and give it to the family. It doesn't have to be anything too impressive or fancy, but there's all sorts of ways to do it. You can turn it into a poem and give it back to them, but it's such a treasure for the families to have this life story of someone. And, and, and you'll be amazed that they'll hear stories that they've never heard before yeah. because they're, they're just willing to sit and talk. And I think that's such a treasure and a way to learn about the world and history also. Something that I do in honor of my mom and that my kids have always helped me with, and I have the kids on Reddit doing it too, is just to make goodie bags for homeless people you see on street corners. You don't have to be any certain age to do this. You just put in whatever you think might be helpful to them. We encourage you know, a bottle of water, nuts, maybe some wipes or whatever it is that you think is would be helpful to them. You don't have to spend a lot of money on it. And then just when you, you know, see somebody at a street corner, give it to them. I usually put a little note in it that just says, hey, somebody cares about you. Somebody's thinking about you. You know, we know life's hard, but, you know, I just wanted you to know that there are people who care. Um, I talked about the walking dogs and petting kittens at an animal shelter. But there's all sorts of ways to be involved that don't have to be, like, official. Right. You can still write it down. You can still put it on your application. I think that's important for parents to know. Yeah, there are so many other ideas out there beyond, you know, the, the few simple ones that I have that people have. But those are some that I feel like are easy for kids to just immediately jump into. Love it. They're great. I love the goodie bags, too. And we did as homeschoolers, we did a lot of uh, visiting the retirement center and played bingo with them and such. And yeah, that's awesome. Great. Yeah. yeah, it was really nice. It was good time. And they're so grateful for the attention. They are. And for the, you know, so many of them are so lonely. That, you know, yes. I know you're working on a couple of exciting things, so please tell us about both your upcoming book and your app. Okay, great. So my book is actually getting typecast right now or ready to be printed, which is super exciting. It's called Hey Admissions Mom, Real Talk from Reddit. And basically, it's just conversations between me and the kids on Reddit or between the kids and the kids or the kids and other helpful adults. I have about 100 of our fellow ATC kids out of the 90,000 who agreed to be part of the book. So I divided it into subjects. So it's easy to just turn to extracurriculars or turn to essays because on Reddit, it's hard to kind of find exactly what you're looking for yes. because it's just, we're constantly streaming and moving on. And so it's divided into subject matter. It's easy to just flip to that, that subject and read about that subject. And you'll find my opinion, my philosophy, but in addition to that, you'll find the kids and what the kids are saying and what the kids are, how the kids are helping each other, which is so amazing to me. And what I love the most about the subreddit is watching the kids as they learn and help each other with this process. And so that's the book. And it should be out hopefully within the next month. Oh, Fingers crossed. congratulations. Yeah. yeah, thank you. I'm so excited about that. And then the app is called College Visi. We have a landing page for it right now at www.collegevisi.com. It should also be out in beta version within the next month or so. Um, College Visi started on the subreddit. Um, my first year I was on there, I was having, a, at this time, kids were trying to decide between colleges and they were like, they could, they were having to decide without ever visiting. And so I was like trying to figure out how to kind of, they, how could they get the feeling of what it was like to visit without ever visiting because they would say, okay, I've gone and I've seen all the pictures. I've watched all the videos. Right. I've done, you know, I've, I've like read what the, the, the result reviews are on Google and niche.com. And I still don't know what it feels like. Like, I want to know what it feels like. So I had this idea of like experience sharing between the kids who go to the colleges to visit then to share what it feels like with the kids who can't go. So the kids who go to the colleges, have I, I have 10 tasks for them to do basically on the college campus that are the things that I tell them to do all the time anyway um, on the subreddit when they go to college visits. And for example, just like sitting on a bench and putting your phone away and just listening to the conversations around you and then just writing them down. So the kids who can't visit, I'm hopeful that if the app works and is successful, if you can't go visit Trinity University in San Antonio, but two or 300 kids have, yeah. then you can read through that enough to get a feel for what it was like to be able to be there. So that's what the app is. So it's a social, you know, it's kind of a, a social media experience sharing app. Um, for what it's like to visit for the kids who can't. Oh, visit. I love it. It's so expensive and to visit. It's, it's very expensive to visit. And it's, 
you know, and it prohibitively for, for many people, you know, whether they're around the world somewhere or just on the other side of the United States. Yes. You know, even if it's driving distance of three or four hours, sometimes their parents can't take off. It's true. You know, yes. Go take them. So it's, um, I felt like it was a, a need um, for kids. And, and also it prevented a lot of kids, the, this lack of being able to visit prevents a lot of kids from being able to apply early decision which is becoming a big issue these days, you know, when, when schools are taking more than half their class in early decisions. Yeah. So this way I'm hoping we can understand it, get a feel for it a little bit more. Yeah, it's we'll great. I awesome. love that idea. <laughs> it's fantastic. It will be Hopefully great. Be out it soon. will be great. Not if, it's going to be great. <laughs> it hasn't been. Good. There's, <laughs> a need. There's a need, I know. <laughs> All right, so before you go, I have the four questions that I ask every guest of mine. They're the most important, of course. <laughs> waffles or pancakes? So I would go with pancakes. However, I'm a Texas girl. And so in Texas, we have uh, breakfast tacos. So really, I'm going to have to be a little bit different and go to breakfast tacos. What is a breakfast taco? <laughs> is it an actual taco? <laughs> I'm not from Texas. So breakfast tacos is you take a tortilla and you put some eggs and salsa and I like avocado and cheese in mine. Okay. And you roll it up. And eat it. That sounds really good. All right. So maybe you'll come. I'm not. A, uh, yeah, they're delicious. <laughs> to be honest, I don't eat wheat right now or flour, so I don't do either. Anyway. I don't either yeah. <laughs> but I like the, so I, take the. I actually take the tortilla off my breakfast stocket. <laughs> okay. So what is one item you couldn't live without and why? So I gave a lot of thought to this question. Um, and, and a lot of things popped in my head. The first thing that popped in my head was Diet Coke, but I'm going to move on from that one. <laughs> Um, and I think it really is meditation. Um, I think the importance of being able to sit and be with myself every day for even five minutes, and sometimes it literally is only five minutes, um, but just the kind of like letting everything settle in um, and turning inward um, and kind of finding that the observer of my life, not the one who's always doing things and moving and, and thinking and craziness, but the observer, the one who kind of sits back and, and, and watches everything and tapping into that is really important. And I feel like, um, when I don't do it and, I, and there are days I don't, I can tell a difference. I can tell the difference in how I approach the world in my frenetic, like, oh my God, oh my God, you know, versus like, I'm going to just sit. And even five minutes will often make a big difference. So I'm going to go with meditation for that. Even though it's not really a thing. No, it is. It's important. Kind of is. I like that. It's a good answer. <laughs> not that you're being judged or graded. It's all good. <laughs> all right. So your all-time favorite movie and any particular reason. Forrest Gump. Forrest Gump? Okay, of course not, for sure. Um, it, it, there's a few reasons. First of all, because it's a family tradition movie. It's one we watch, you know, on our driving trips across the country. And so and so we all have it memorized in my family, the whole movie. And so I have like this great family connection of just like when my kids were little watching that movie over and over. But really, I think also it spoke to me and it was a movie I wanted to be part of my kid's life because it was such an example of somebody living his life for himself. You know, living a good life not worried about the opinions of others, you know, really just living the life that he felt like he needed to live. And he's, you know, if you really pay attention to the philosophy of the book and to, to Forrest himself, it, he's such a deep thinker in so many ways, but yet he doesn't stop that. He doesn't let that stop him from getting out and, and fulfilling his kind of life right. goals at the yeah. time. I need to rewatch it now. It is so oh, it's good. Amazing. It is so good. I listen to the music. Actually, it's on my work playlist. Yeah. I do too. Yeah. I was going to say the really music good. is amazing too. Yeah. Okay. So I'm wondering, this is going to be meditation too. You have an hour of alone time. No one will bother you. What is your go-to thing to do? Um, I go for a walk. That's if I have an hour of alone time and, and I, I'm going to put on my walking shoes and put on my headphones and get out. And I love to be in nature. So I have a bayou not far from here. There's a lot of birds and, you know, wildflowers occasionally and fish in the water. And I just love to kind of be in that. And then I also love music. So I listen to my music and, or podcasts um, or books kind of depending on my mood. Um, I kind of rotate among those three or sometimes I just don't listen to anything and just pay attention to nature. But yeah, it's for a walk for sure. And I, but I like to walk for more than an hour. It's usually two hours. So is your weather good most of the year to walk? 
in Houston. Yeah. Um, in July, August, and September, I have to get up really early gotcha. to walk because it's just too hot during the day. So, but as long as I'm up by like seven and walking, Did it's you good. Walk in January. Oh my gosh. Yes. <laughs> I mean, I can, it's just really cold. <laughs> oh no, 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 no. We have a, our, our weather from October through June is amazing. Oh, okay. Yeah. We're always hubby and I are always I talking about where we want to move to. <laughs> I'm wearing shorts in January frequently. Nice. Yeah, All right. Definitely. Good piece of information, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's been fantastic having you join me. I'm so excited that you are here. Um, thanks for being here. Thanks for all that oh, you do. You. Thank you. I mean, you do so much and I can't wait to see what this app does. I, I'm so oh, excited about it, really. And thanks for making the transition to college easier on the students and the parents. So well done. Yeah, thank you very, very much. I appreciate being here and you're asking me. Wonderful. I'm glad you said yes. Thanks. I'm glad you asked me. <laughs> my friend, links to all resources and how to connect to Admissions Mom will be in my show notes. Check them out on my website, youremptynestcoach.com forward slash P19. That's P for podcast and the episode number 19. Admissions Mom handle on Facebook, Instagram, and Reddit is Admissions Mom. And on Twitter, she's Admissions Mom underscore. If you are ready to dig in and create a change in your own life that impacts both you and those around you, I invite you to join my upcoming coaching program. Be sure to get on my wait list as space is always limited. The questions I have for you in this episode are, did Admissions Mom give you a new perspective on extracurriculars? And number two, how do you feel about extracurriculars? Fly on over to our Facebook group. Our name is Green Popsicle Sticks. Want to know why? Listen to episode number 17 or head to my website, youremptynestcoach.com forward slash community for links to join our flock. Why should you join our group? While the adjustment to not having your kiddos at home full time isn't always easy, but it sure can be a ton more fun with a flock of friends. We look forward to seeing you there. As always, I provide content to make you think, my empty nest friend. My hope is that I am able to provide you with thoughts that positively impact your life. You'll also find show notes for this and every episode on my website. My next episode's title is You Found Future You, Now for the How. If you are a first-time listener, or even if you've listened before and you've enjoyed this podcast, I have a favor to ask. If you could take the time to subscribe to this podcast, that would be fantastic. It is free after all. Also, if you have an extra moment to give this podcast a five-star rating, it will help other future empty nest mothers to find it when they need it. Thanks for your time and energy with that. And thanks so much for listening, my empty nest friend. Remember, you are amazing. I'm doing my script different and now it's in a Google Doc. And <laughs> If I leave, I don't know where I am.